Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our uh, second webinar for the Executive Education Unit at the Daniels College of Business. My name is Aaron Templer. I am here to just uh, facilitate the proceedings uh, and, uh, and try to add some value uh, with uh, David uh, Morelli, who is here to, to really give us the, the meat of, of what we're talking about. David is an uh, outstanding uh, working professional in addition to his duties as an uh, exec ed adjunct faculty. So he's that rare sort of combination of uh, theory and practice and uh, somebody that really uh, we love taking advantage of uh, in the executive education department because he's, he's got that balance. He really looks for a lot of uh, great insight through data and uh, research, uh, but has applied it in uh, some really interesting ways. So we're lucky to have him, and I'm not going to say too much more about his background because I think he'll touch on that a little bit. Um, so just in terms of the logistics, please, uh, as you uh, have questions, post them uh, in the questions section. I'll be keeping an eye on that and uh, we'll answer them along the way. Uh, we'll try to keep this, uh, you know, much more of a dialogue than, than anything else. I think uh, we want to make sure that it's relevant to you. So don't hesitate to ask questions through that panel, um, and we'll get to them. Uh, we've got everybody muted, of course. It can get a little unruly if we sort of unmute everybody. So I think the best way to handle that will be just fielding your questions through the Q&A panel. Um, with that, I'm excited to turn this over to, to David Morelli. Uh, we ran through this yesterday, and I've already learned a lot, David, on how to be more productive. I literally <laughs> used some of the things we talked about uh, last night, this morning. So uh, awesome. hopefully, hopefully everybody else will, will find a lot of value and, and, and takeaways uh, to use immediately in their, in their working professional. So take it away. Excellent. Well, uh, first, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you uh, and, and with you again, uh, because we've gotten a, a chance to do one, one of these as well. So uh, yeah, let's, let's dive into the content. I want to make sure that this is um, as useful for everybody um, as possible. So uh, it's funny that before we, we dive into, you know, just sort of the, the subsequent stuff, um, productivity is so important because it's all the stuff that's important to you that you need to get done getting things done in less time with less stress and less effort and knowing how your brain works in order to um, put together the pieces of what the highest impact or the priority things that you're, you're going to do together with uh, time and becoming more efficient, I think is um, it helps everybody either get more of the stuff done that they need to get done or spend more time with you know family or friends or doing the things that they, they really want to do because the faster we can get through the stuff that we have to do, um, the better. So that, that, that's what I'm hoping to do is, is help reveal some of that stuff. So um, yeah, let's, let's jump in. Before, before we go uh, you know, too deep, I just wanted to give you a quick background just so you know my perspective. Um, so you can kind of say, oh, well, that doesn't make sense. He only does whatever has. Or you can say, oh, actually, this, that might be useful in the application. So for, for 20 years, I've um, been a professional coach, um, professional executive coach. And so um, everything that you're going to learn here has been road tested and um, has really helped people. And it's, this, it's the stuff that I get feedback on is, oh my gosh, that was so helpful to me. I just, you know, either I got way more done today or I was able to, to do that. And now I, I live my whole life and I've taught my team that or, or whatever. That's the stuff that, that I want to share with you. Um, I also, <laughs> the strange, you know, thing about me is I also have a radio show. I, I've a couple of businesses that um, grew to over a million in revenue per year. And, and one of the one of the great platforms that came out of that was a, a radio show that has um, 1.2 million subscribers. So um, I talked to best-selling authors and I talked to executives and I, I talked to um, professors and, and all kinds of people who are at the top of their fields. And, and some of this content has also been curated by them or um, generated by them. So um, that, that's, a, that's a place for for ongoing content if you're interested as well. Um, I joined a company called PaySimple four and a half years ago and um, started a different kind of corporate coaching. And so again, about road testing, for four years, I've been really working at the various stages and levels of how do you help people get more productive, uh, more capable, more focused, and, and the results um, have shown that we've actually uh, 10x the company in four years. Um, and it's a pretty substantial company. So, um, and then, um, I got my executive MBA. I, I know you did as well, Aaron, um, at the university of Denver and, and I'm happy to be here as a, um, adjunct faculty as well. So in the executive education department. So, um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of background, like this stuff will be, um, 
tested. It's not, we're not just, you know, saying, I, I think this is going to work, go and try it. It's, it's been uh, proven out. So, so really it's about the, the brain and how your brain works. Um, there are a number of different parts of the brain. We won't go too far into uh, the brain itself, but, but I do want to say that um, when your brain is overwhelmed, your IQ drops substantially. And when you feel like, I don't know what to do, that freeze, that fight, flight, or freeze response that the amygdala or the limbic system is responsible for, um, it hijacks the brain, right? And so what we're going to do is keep you in those frontal lobes, which is uh, what they call the executive center of the brain. Um, and some of these techniques will help you do that because if you know how your brain works, you can optimize against it and hopefully get a lot of... Uh, a lot of things done, but, but the most important things done as well. So uh, we'll talk about how that works all throughout. Um, but why this topic? Why does it matter? Well, there's so much that we have, at least in my experience, I don't know, Aaron, I'm, I'm sure there's so many things that we have in our minds, right? And the more that we try and churn multiple projects going on at the same time, or, you know, all the stuff that we have to do or the things that we're thinking about, um, it, our brains are a little bit like computers in that, um, the, it, either hogs bandwidth, each project hogs bandwidth or RAM, you know, the, work, the, the sort of working memory uh, gets taken up by all the stuff that we have. So we're going to give you some systems so that you can uh, solidify those into, I know exactly what to do when, uh, because I think that's really important. Um, a lot of people are married, you know, the, it's, there's information overload, there's um, too many to do's, there's many more constituents or people, you know, stakeholders in the work that we have, we're becoming more collaborative, which means there's just more to do more to keep track of. So uh, many people are buried in that. And then it's, you know, people start putting reminders on their screens, and then suddenly it's too much and, and they can't figure out what to do anyways, right. So um, sort of getting buried in sticky notes. And so really, the results come from your ability to focus. And um, that ability is something that we're going to help you with. And in some ways, it's a little bit, this is <laughs> it's maybe not about golf, maybe some people that's like your thing, but um, it's almost like that tunnel vision is what we're going for, where you're able to hone in on one thing. And that one thing is the most important thing. And so we're going to be, uh, again, giving you some of that here today without getting distracted because you know who's not distracted by a driving dog right <laughs> or just cruising along like <laughs> and there are plenty of distractions that we have in our lives today you know whether it's facebook and you know or some youtube video that comes through or pinterest or you know whatever it is right people get pretty distracted by uh, all kinds of things we even um call it efficiency and start you know doing instant messaging you know chat boards or whatever but then it's we're constantly being pinged and again, we get distracted and, and lose our focus. And our focus is our number one asset when it comes to productivity. Uh, so uh, being able to, to have that you know, focus, that directed effort, and then being able to change directions when we need to. And uh, so I, I, what we'll do here is give you the, the tools to be able to do that. And the systems that we're going to build will actually um, build together. So you'll, you'll have multiple layers that will all add up to uh, something that you can take away and use. Hopefully that's, that's the goal. Um, so here's the classic question, right? What do I do now? And I think most people are, uh, they're, they almost constantly try to figure out what should I do? And so our classic um, solution to that is a to-do list, right? But if you have a to-do list that looks like this, my question, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I'll ask you, Aaron, um, which of these things is, is the most important thing, thing to do? Yeah, difficult to, to say. Um, you know, you can sort of guess or um, use or intuit your way, um, right. you know, through the list, but usually you just sort of start at the top and start hacking away. Right. And, and that's what most, most people do is like, well, I wrote this first. Let me just go down the list and cross things off. But they have, um, it, or you go, okay, what should I do? And then you have to almost open the file, the mental file on each of these and think, okay, what needs to get done? What, what do I need to do when analyzing uh, the coordinated spreadsheet? Right. Okay. Let me hold that. Let me try and hold that. Right. And then let me pull up the checking last month's financial errors. Okay. How long is it? Well, okay. What, right. And so you have to sort of open all of these files, which again, we were talking about, that's a lot of Ram or working memory hogs your bandwidth. Right. And so you can't think, as quickly. And, and so, um, you know, something so, else that will sometimes sure. hijack my to-do list. I thought of this, David, is that yeah. I'll go through the list and whatever I feel like doing, 
whatever my yeah, right, energy right, 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 right. And then that'll, you know, inevitably then I'll miss a deadline because I ignored something that should have gotten done, you know. Right. I don't know, like an energy right. sort of uh, using energy to determine what to do first. Right, right. It, and it's funny because um, cognitively speaking, uh, there's something called the availability heuristic, which means that you um, you think that your what's on top of your mind is the whole picture, right? So uh, one version of that is how you live is like how everybody else lives, you know. And and if you widened the scope and looked at everybody across the world, you'd say, oh my gosh, I can't even believe that we're sitting in comfortable spots with a computer. I mean, that's just, that's, holy cow, that's top tier, right? But sometimes we lose perspective in that and we compare ourselves to other people, which is a different, uh, a different bias. But in some ways it's, oh, what do I need to do? The first thing that comes into your head, oh, okay, I'll do that. Versus actually having something that, that helps you b- remember what's important and when, right? Right, yep. So uh, I like to use this analogy. Uh, have you ever played uh, Tetris out of curiosity? Yes, and my wife will tell you that I'm really bad at spatial recognition. I'm the guy that <laughs> okay. Okay. overflows the Tupperware with the leftovers and I have no idea. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Well, so here's what most people do. They go, well, uh, I, obviously I see this thing. And if you haven't played Tetris, it's basically like, pieces fall from the sky and you have to put them in right the the appropriate locations and and so what most people do is go oh i'll take this piece and let me just uh stick it flat and stick it down there right and for those of you that have pl- played tetris you're probably cringing right now you're like oh my god i can't believe you left those spaces because any space that you leave underneath you get penalized for it and eventually it builds up and you lose the game so um so that's what most people do though. They're like, all right, I'll just take number item number one. But if you don't do it in an efficient way, then uh, that might not actually be the right thing to do. You might be leaving gaps. Like you said, you might be missing deadlines that you didn't realize you were missing, which is what you get penalized for down in that bottom row. Right? So here, here's what some other people do. They go, Oh, I'll just, I'll stick it there. And that's not bad, but it's kind of like, all right, well, where's the one gap at the bottom let me just put the piece there, right? And so that, that's okay. But if you think about you have half an hour and then maybe this is a two hour task, right? It's got, you know, four sections of that half an hour. Um, if you only have half an hour and you start a two hour task, usually people end up feeling like, oh man, I, I didn't get that whole thing done, right? And so the dimensions of that piece actually matter to where you place it. So for those of you that are potentially, you know, you, you've played Tetris a lot or whatever, you'd say, well, what about we stick it over here, right? And then, then you have another piece that actually at the bottom looks exactly like, you know, that opening. You can actually, you know, put a piece there, right? And so you, you can serve it by, by selecting the right spot for it. And that's really what we're going for in time management. I, I call it, we need to add dimensionality. So here's the list, right? So if you were to have this extra dimension of priority, then Aaron, which item would you do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd probably go plan sales strategy because it's an A plus, but maybe that takes too long. You know, if I only have 20 minutes before my next meeting or something, I might make a different decision. Right, okay. So say then you, uh, you had... 10 minutes or 20 minutes, um, which would you do? Yeah, looks like, you know, it might be, I might even think ahead. So if I've got a mm-hmm. meeting and I need to get mentally prepared for it, I might take on verified shipping on package Yep. to knock that off, to give myself some time to get mentally prepared for the next meeting. Or I could even go to a, a B level um, if I feel like maybe it's easier and I'm not going to get drained before my meeting or something like that. Right, right. And so you're, you're also... Um, comparing an added dimension called what do I have energy to tackle? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's important that it's hard to, because that's real time, it's hard to put on a list. But if you, most people do this, they go, huh, I have 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, but what do I need to do? And then they spend 10 minutes thinking about what they should be doing. And then they burn not only those brain chemicals, but they also burn the time rather than having codified everything. And then being able to go, Cool. I have 10 minutes. What should I pick off this list? Great. Verify shipping. On, right. And then you've done the most important thing. Let's say you had 30 minutes and you'd already crossed off the verify uh, shipping on package. Then 
you'd probably pick off respond to calendar requests, right? Because it's a B priority and 30 minutes versus um, having the fixed miscalculations on industry analysis, which is maybe a C priority, right? So you can weigh multiple dimensions. And that's that thing that, like in Tetris, where you, you start to look at these multiple shapes and figure out what fits in based on that manipulation. Here's what some people do. Um, they add due date. And I'm a fan and not a fan of this at the same time. So think about it this way. You go, oh, well, I don't want to miss the deadline. Great, agreed. But if you only work on the things that are coming up for due dates and you say, oh yeah, I've got plenty of time for uh, what, whatever it is, right? I've got plenty of time for that, uh, that due date that's coming up. I would ask you this, how many times does one moment in time dictate everything that you need to know prior to a coming deadline? Or do you get stuff added to your to-do list, right? So if you only manage by deadline, you're, you're presupposing that you know everything that's coming. And that's the danger of just doing deadline versus priority, right? Priority and time. And it tends to be that you just have to get a little ahead of um, due dates and working on the highest priority items that you end up getting a lot more efficient. And then you start to see, well, if I manage by priority, I'm not even sure that I need to do, you know, the, the fix the miscalculations. Maybe I can hand that off to somebody else, right? And so you get choosy about what to do when. So adding due date is good, um, but not necessarily to the uh, just running by due date. Does, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, no, I think so. Cool. It, yeah, I think some people just kind of are driven by due dates when um, there's more efficiencies to be found uh, by, yep. yeah, again, adding dimensionality to the due date, really, yep. is what I'm hearing. Yep, exactly. So you're wanting to make sure that you focus on the most important thing with the time that you have available, because that will create efficiency all throughout your pipeline, so to speak, of things you right. need to do, and you'll get ahead of deadlines. Right. right. So yeah. you'll be, you'll be keeping up or keeping pace um, ahead of schedule. So it's really about mastering your time from my perspective. Right. So um, just, uh, just to play with this concept a little bit more, like what are a couple things that you would add uh, to your list? Like if you were to, if you were to say, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but if you were to say, all right, I've got a couple things I need to do. What might be, might, what would be some of those for you? Yeah, I've got to work on uh, a presentation. I'm giving I'm okay. teaching a class in Chicago next week. Um, okay. I should really get prepared for that. Um, sort of daily, I need to check in with team members who are executing various work for various okay. clients. Okay, so I'm going to write these down. Okay. okay. Yep. Go ahead. Just so that they're not stuck, and I, you know, if there's something yeah. I need to do to get to get them rolling. Um, let's see. I need to uh, follow up on a couple of email requests for meetings. That are so. That's kind of an interesting one, David. That you, maybe you can explore a little bit. I don't really know how important they are until I get in to look and read them. So it's, it. you know, and then that can kind of send me down a a weird path. Um, right. So there's three. Yep. Yep. Um, so those meet the meetings one, right? That is, are they distinct? meetings meeting meet with joe meet with ann meet with whoever yeah someone's got a request or somebody uh wants to network or you know i'm not exactly you're never really sure until you open the email and sort of dive in totally um so what you can do is it, i call it the two minute rule right it's kind of a rule of thumb that um if it takes more than two minutes to answer that email you might stick it on a list you can even copy and paste like the subject line or, or whatever copy and paste it into a list and then give it a quick priority based on what you see. So you give it a scan, if that makes sense, because not all follow-ups on emails will be similar. Does that make sense? You yeah. could also mark it in your you know, address book or your, your inbox, right? With different flag colors or something like that. Mm -hmm. right? But so you might say, great, every, every red is 24 hours or less and every orange is 48 hours or less or, you know, and then green, I don't know, I'm just making it up, but green sure. might be within a week or, or something like that. So if that's, if that's your thing, then say you might have follow up on meetings, but you might have red underneath that. And those might be a priorities and that might take all of 20 minutes, right? So instead of you tackling the whole thing, let's say you have 20 minutes, you might go onto those. So, so let's add um, priority 
So for you, and, and the reason we're going through this example, and thanks for playing along, is because I, I want people to see how this works. Because those questions that you had, like, wait, what do I do with this? I think we all have those from time to time, right? right. As yeah. we start to implement it. So hopefully this is something that you can actually implement at the end of the day. So what would be the priority? So you had um, Chicago, uh, prep, you got team, and then follow up on meetings. Um, if you were to give them priority, prioritization. Yeah, I, would, uh, I think I would say uh, f- make, managing the team to make sure that you know, yeah. all the clients are, all the projects are running smoothly and that's just the general sort of engine of my business, right? So I should probably sure. make sure that nothing's, nothing's stuck there. Um, the, I, I should probably get my ducks in a row meeting-wise I think next because okay. uh, yeah, if there's something urgent in there that I'm not quite seeing or it, it might be important to get it, you know, sort of squared away before I leave for Chicago. Okay. Um, and then I feel like I've probably got time between now and then to, to go over the, the materials and, and get myself prepared. So that would probably be the third priority. Okay. okay. So it sounds like if we were putting A, B, C on it, you know, it sounds like A might be priority for the team. And yeah. maybe that's a, a minus might be the meetings and then B might be Chicago. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Right? Um, while I have the, the floor real quick, David, I noticed sure. a couple other people have joined the webinar. So I just wanted oh, to remind yeah. everybody, if you've got questions, go ahead and uh, post them in the Q and a panel. Um, and we'll get to them along the way. We'd love to hear from you and make sure that this is relevant for you guys, but just know that it's kind of ongoing. So we've got you muted, but um, we'll answer your questions as we, as we see them. Sorry, love go it. ahead. Love it. Yeah, no, that's excellent. Um, all right. So, so those are the priority. How much time would it take to, let's say, follow up on the team with the team? You know, yeah. As an item? yeah. Assuming that everything goes okay and that there's not, not any kind of major obstacles, not very long, probably half an hour or something like that. Okay. So 30 minutes for that one. And then follow up on meetings. Um, how, how long do you think that would take? Yeah, maybe 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Okay, great. Um, and then Chicago, the presentation stuff, what do you think for that one? Yeah, that's longer. I'm probably going to you know, go back and do some more research on some of the topics and pull together some thoughts and some extra reading. So you know, that could be a, you know, as many as two hours maybe, something two like hours. that. Okay, great. Great. So if you think about this and, and obviously you've got due date in mind too, right? So it, it, what we're wanting to do is, is explore these things. Uh, I actually, if it's okay with you, I'd love to hold that thought yeah. and uh, do some of the, the stuff around time because time will also help to dictate where to put different things. Great. Is, that, is that all right with you? Yeah, totally, man. Cool. Okay, great. Um, so let's go on to, to looking at um, how your brain processes and the, the focusing power that, that your brain has. So um, there are two methodologies that, that I've used and I think are, are really effective. Um, one is called the Pomodoro method, which is tomato and Italian. It's like the tomato timer that's you know, on the screen, right? So you set it for 25 minutes uh, and then you focus. And I candidly don't like the tick, tick, tick sounds. So, um, so I actually use my phone, right? So I'll pull up my phone and I'll, you know, set it for 25 minutes or whatever time I have, turn it upside down, which is important. And then I'll focus on whatever it is that I'm doing, knowing that I don't have to watch the time. I have something else watching the time for me, right? Which gives, it frees up my brain to be able to wholly focus on that one thing, whatever that one thing is. And so um, they, there's research on this, which uh, shows that if you go 25 minutes on, kind of like a sprint, right? 25 minutes on, five minutes off, 25 minutes on, five minutes off, that cycle, doing that four times is one round, right? So you'd have two hours blocked for getting this done. And your brain operates in two different modes. One is the focus mode, right? Which is you're honing in on something, you're, you know, you're forwarding the progress. The other is diffuse mode, which is where a lot of creativity happens. Creative problem solving happens there. So your brain needs both. And most of our days are spent focused. And then our brains, you know, kick into diffuse, the big diffuse mode called sleeping, right? And so we get this balance in our lives. But if we get this balance in our days, our brains can be fresher. Does that kind of make sense? That's yeah. what we're trying to do is create a cyclicality sure. that mirrors the brain's natural rhythms, right? So, um, so that's one. We, I'll show you a, a sample of what that would look like here in a second. The other method um, that I find really helpful is um, 90 minutes on and 10 minutes off. 
So the 90-10 method, um, from my perspective, is one where you take on a, a, a bigger project, right? It, sometimes it takes you about, you know, 15 to maybe 30 minutes to really get context, get your arms around something. So let's just say the Chicago, you know, project. I don't know that you could do little 15 or 25 minute bursts, right? It, it might be that you need to wrap your arms around and go, okay, great. Let me just sit down, start doing this research, pulling in this stuff. And that's like, oh, okay, great. Yep. Now let me take a break. Let me step away. And then maybe come back and review what you did. Right. That might be your, you know, sort of combination of those two. So right. I find, um, particularly for, uh, I work with, you know, computer programmers and, and people like that, as well as all the way through the spectrum. Um, so people who have high frequency of tasks, meaning they got to turn over tasks really quickly, 25 on, five off tends to make more sense. But if it's a longer, depthful, creative task, the 90 10 seems to work a little bit better for people. Um, so, here's what happens, right? So this is the 90-10 method. But if you think about, most people say, but I can't afford a break throughout the day, right? I, I don't even get up. I, I don't even leave my desk for lunch. I just keep working through lunch. But um, I'll, I'll ask you, have you ever noticed that when you start at the beginning of the day and, you know, you start with gusto and then throughout the day, it tends to, your attention tends to wane and then you kind of end up at the end of the day, kind of like, oh, I've got, you know, an hour left. And then you try and squeeze in a few tasks, but you're not that fresh. Sure. Mm-hmm. Kind of know what, yeah. That's this tailing off, right? That we're talking about the, the trailing of your attention throughout time. And uh, it, it, you probably remember um, the area under the curve, right? Do you remember that from like geometry or, or whatever, right? Barely, yeah. Okay, barely, yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you were to say how much, how much, uh, how much area is underneath this line, yeah. right? Is it, it sort of trails off or tails off? You'd say, well, okay, I could, I could see that amount. But if you took out just the slivers, but you kept it, you know, all the way across, you'd end up with more area, more stuff done, right? By yeah. taking breaks. But here's the hardest thing. When you have to take the break is when you still feel productive. And that's hard, right? That's like, but wait, I don't, I don't want to step away from this project. I, I still have momentum. But your brain needs a break in order to step back in to be fresh the next time. And so what you do is you have that continue to stay or be solidified throughout the day having taken regular breaks. Does that well, kind of make sense? Yeah, it's almost like when people stop taking the antibiotic too soon because they're feeling good. Yeah, then exactly. they get sick again. Right. You got it. Yep. Perfect. Perfect analogy. So I find this is really important for uh, people who, who want to get a lot done. It's a discipline to take a break. It's realizing that your brain is fresher longer and that that's actually one of the most important things for you. And then the same thing happens throughout the week. We won't go through it, but um, if you don't build in recovery, you know, doing things that are fun or have, you know, that are interesting to you or feel rejuvenating, um, you'll end up trailing off through the week just as much as right through the three each day. Right. So the fresher that you stay on a Monday and do something like this, you're going to be that much fresher on a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday and a Friday, right? So you'll end up with a lot more energy. Plus uh, bonus, you'll end up with a lot more energy on your weekends as well because you operated according to what your brain needed. That kind of makes uh, sense. Yeah, it does. And I could, I, I could hear other people asking qu- this question. What if my boss doesn't sort of allow for this? How do I, how do I yep. work this into an, a work environment that maybe isn't as conducive to yep. taking these kinds of frequent breaks? Yeah. Um, the break can be turning your attention to a different task that requires a lot less effort, right? So it might be deep focus on one thing, step back and you know, check email or whatever, right? And then step back into the deep focus thing. That could be one. Um, another thing could be if, I mean, everybody can get up to go to the bathroom, right? I mean, t- for the most part, like unless right. there's chains at the desk and we yeah. just don't know about it. Uh, and, and the, you know, the labor, you know, board doesn't come by and, you know, shut you down. Um, you can get up from your desk. And so if you can get up and go and get a drink or again, get water or uh, get a drink of water or get a drink of coffee or whatever, um, or go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do. But you can build these in, in natural cycles that are socially acceptable. And I think that's part of it. Even if it's just a couple of minutes, uh, it's really yeah. helpful. Um, cool. Let's, let's continue. So if you, if you wanted to block it out, 
right? You'd have the 90-10 rhythm, usually starting off with 10 minutes of planning. Um, There's an efficiency expert named Brian Tracy. Uh, He talks about that every one minute of planning is worth 10 minutes of efficiency. So that means that even though you're planning and you're lining things up, but that it's a little bit like you're taking aim for where it is you want to put your attention, right? And so it's, you can create that modularity to say, oh, okay, I know my day. And now that I have the big picture, I realize that I probably need to talk to my team. And then I have this big block. I don't have a big block in the afternoon. So maybe what I do is I stick the Boston project there. And then I do this other thing because it's going to fit neatly into my day, right? That would be planning versus you going in and just going in some other format where you're not really looking and being strategic about your day. And so that 10 minutes of planning creates a lot more efficiency at the end. Does that kind of make sense? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Half done projects, by the way, um, are the bane of productivity's existence. And what I mean by that is if it takes you half an hour to gain context and then you get half an hour of productivity, but you actually needed an hour of productivity, you'll end up being really frustrated sort of halfway through. And then you'll have to come back, get maybe 15 to 20 minutes of context to continue that thing. But it's the heavy lifting of trying to remember where we were that's actually cognitively intense, right? And so you burn a lot of your brain chemicals and, and frustration also sets in when you're like, ugh. I didn't get this done, right? And uh, there's something, we won't go into it now, but there's something called the progress principle uh, that basically shows the more progress that you make, which is part of completing things, um, the, you end up having a lot better um, feeling of happiness and fulfillment yeah. than if you end up only partially getting things done or not feeling you made progress, your, your happiness goes down. So in order to drive a major level of happiness, get a lot done, but set yourself up for success by planning and blocking out uh, your day and creating modularity. Does that, does that kind of make sense? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's a leadership principle of celebrating successes with your team so that you can yeah. motivate people to, I mean, everyone wants to feel a part of something that's successful and that's moving forward. It, it should come as no surprise that individually you can kind right. of lead yourself that way. Yep, yep. It's funny, you know, there'll be some uh, days that are more challenging than others and I'll, I'll actually sit down uh, at night and just say, ugh, Like I didn't feel that great about, well, let me just check in with the progress that I made. And so I'll list off two or three things, you know, that I made progress on and, and I'll feel like, oh, okay. You know, like I did my little reset. It's not that I didn't get those same things done. It's just that I didn't recognize them. So to your point, right, it's, it's recognizing team members for the progress that they're making, but it's also recognizing yourself. Man, and isn't so, life partners and friends good for that too? You come to them with this, man, I just feel like such a failure. And then they're always there to tell you all the great things that you do. Right. right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. We may as well be there for ourselves, right? Yes. What, why? Right. <laughs> Don't rely on Sometimes people, yeah, 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 exactly. When you need it, you're there for yourself, yeah. you know? So, um, so here's another one um, or another way to think about it. So let's say you have a 30 minute task and you're like, great, I'll plug that in. I'll add another 60 minute task and then take a little break, right? So you just got two major things done, especially if they're high priority items where you feel like, ah, a relief. Have you ever had that feeling where you just cross something important off the list and you're like, okay, everything else is bonus. There are some projects that are like that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people put low priority items first, trying to get a lot done but the other thing weighs on them, the high priority item weighs on them. So if you can flip it and get your most important stuff done early, one, you don't have to worry about what the rest of the day has because sometimes, you know, like you said, in checking with your team, you might end up with an extra hour, hour long project that you didn't know you would have, right? Because you need to step in and help, right? Um, So if you get the really important stuff done early, then that leaves you almost free to do the less important stuff later without as much demand, right? Pressure. And the system doesn't like pressure. Your your brain doesn't like pressure as much. Pressure to a point, you know, deadlines do help to get things done, but at the same time, overstressing actually makes you less productive. So so cool. And then there's a Pomodoro method that I mentioned. Um, Just a sample calendar. You could, you know, put it in an Excel file or whatever and just map out map out your day or uh, even write it down by hand, you know, that kind of thing, just alternating um, and then taking breaks. So then that gets us to the, the next real important topic, um, which is making sure you're working on your highest impact 
areas. And so um, this is similar but different from priority, right? So, uh, so high impact items are the things where it takes a little bit of effort, but you get a big result versus a lot of effort, but a little result, right? And so uh, we'll, we'll go into these. There's a lot of research that shows that you can only have three priorities, that any more than that actually becomes overwhelming to your brain. So similarly, um, that, that same efficiency expert, Brian Tracy, that I was talking about, talks about, um, and, and many other people talk about this as well, but that there are three priorities that ultimately drive the majority of your success, right? So 90, he says 90% of your success really comes from three basic things that you do. And all the rest is sort of ancillary and noise. But most of the time, people focus on all the noise, hoping to free up time for the most important things. But we so we reverse the, the sort of order of things because we're sort of like, oh, I'll save the high priority stuff for time when I can really focus on that. And so a lot of times people put it off in perpetuity, right? So here's a way to think about it. Um, you got three, those are big, those big three, you want to focus on those. Don't keep trying to add things to your to-do list. I've also got to do this. I've also got to do this. Um, know what those big three are. Um, I like this analogy. Um, it's the the lion tamer, right? So why does the lion not eat the lion tamer? Well, the legs of the stool, there's four legs to the stool and the lion perceives those as four separate threats, right? So the lion's brain gets overwhelmed, becomes docile and sits down, right? And yeah. so we do the same thing. We have four undifferentiated items that we have to focus on, four projects, four you know, big initiatives or whatever. Which one do I do? There's not enough dimensionality. Yeah. You right? become paralyzed. You don't do anything. Exactly. And that's the worst thing you could do for your productivity, right? So you got to know your big three. And then when it comes down to it, that ranking of a prioritized to-do list um, is a subset of knowing these three if that makes sense. So, uh, so here's how I think about it. You've got high impact activities and low impact activities. Those three items, we'll, we'll list them out, right? I'll give you an example here in a second. And then you've got all the rest of the stuff. If the low impact stuff doesn't get done, it's going to be less costly. If you understand your prior, the, your high impact activities really well, it'll be less costly. Nobody will care as much as if you don't get your big stuff done. Right. So let's take a salesperson, right? Who's, who's on the phone. Mm -hmm. So think about it. If you're on a call, right, you're prospecting, meaning you're finding new people to talk to, or you're closing a deal, right? Like those are really the only things that drive the ultimate numbers, right? So it's, you get paid on commission, right? And the commission is a function of how many sales you make when sales is a function of closing deals, being on calls or whatever, however it is that you sell, yeah. and then making sure you have enough people to sell to right? So here's a list of all the other things that people spend time doing that aren't high impact activities. Let me check a little Facebook or, you know what I mean? Let me check some baseball scores. It's baseball season. Yeah, the and, Rockets uh, are doing well though. So maybe that needs to shift over. Maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe that does drive your business. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on if you're prospecting at the game, that might be a good way to. Yeah, there you go. There so, you go. um, but so, so emailing, sometimes there are high impact activities when they come to setting up maybe some of the stuff, right? The high impact activity stuff. But, but most emailing, most people try and sell through email, but that's not where most of their sales are made. So it, it's an interesting thing, right? Or getting involved in drama or complaining or, or, or whatever. Inefficient, what I call click patterns where you're like, oh, let me open that window. Oh, I closed that window. Oh crap, where was that window? You know what I mean? You go, right? That, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's really looking at how much of your day do you actually focus on the stuff that brings you 90% of your results. And it's a little scary for most people when they really look at their time spent. You're lucky if you spend a quarter of your day on the stuff that's highest impact for most people. So, um, so just, just out of curiosity, um, for you, if you were to, to, you know, throw in a couple high impact activities for you and your business, yeah. uh, knowing you're, you're a business owner, you know, great marketing organization, um, uh, consulting, you know, and, and, uh, and work that you do there. So what are your high impact activities for, for your business? Yeah, I would say, um, uh, networking with the right people, those maintaining those relationships with people who, um, 
refer me and my agency or uh, yep. that I might actually do work for. So, okay. uh, yep. you know, those, those key kind of networking um, opportunities. Um, making sure that my team is, I mentioned this before, but yeah, you know, yeah, engaged. Yeah, yeah. And if there's somebody that's doing work for me for a client, um, and there is, just making sure that you know, they've got the tools they need, that they're feeling like they're working on things that are important, that I appreciate it, that I'm here to remove those obstacles for them. Yep, yep. Um, and then the third would probably be doing actual consulting work, writing reports, adding value to the, to the engagements that we sort of have on the books. So yeah. those would probably be the top three. Fair enough. So them delivering value and continuing to deliver a high amount of value. Fair. Okay. So that, that maintaining relationships and, and meeting with people and, and stuff like that, right? I'm, if we were to make an equivalent, that sounds like that's not prospecting because it's more, much more relationship oriented, but it's okay. like, yeah, sure. You could call it business development. Yeah, business development. Yeah. yeah. So you got that. You got to make sure that your team is being productive, right? You're working with your team, making sure they're engaged, et cetera. And then that you're offering value, right? Mm-hmm. So if you think about your business, if you just did those three things really well, how, how much more impactful would that be? If let's say you took 90% of your day to do those 90% yeah, yeah. activities. Be Interesting, huge. right? Yeah, yeah, be yeah. Huge. Oh yeah. So that's what most people don't realize is, wait a second, there are three core things that I just should spend more time doing that because if I do that, I imagine right, the, the work that even that you do right? You're writing reports or whatever. That's what has people go, whoa, I see the value of it. And then they, they come back and they want more, of course. And, you know, they refer their friends and they, right? Like, so there's a ton of value or that your team is delivering that value or that you're building relationships in order to provide that value, right? Like it makes complete sense to me. Mm-hmm. What are some of the low impact things that you might <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do well, you and I kind of chatted about this last night. From a business perspective, there are low impact things that you know you sort of have to do to keep yourself, you know, and your spirit sort of engaged, right? Volunteer activities and hobbies and all those kinds of things. So yeah. setting setting those aside because you know, yeah, because yeah, we don't want to b- kill the heart in the name of productivity, right? Like you yeah, got exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. But I would say um, uh, I spend I don't have a good way of filtering emails. So I probably spend too much time not understanding the emails and getting sort of sucked down rabbit holes and in, in answering sure. emails. Um, again, it's sort of this issue where you don't really know how much time it's going to take or how important it is until you open it and start answering it. Yep. Um, so that, um, you know, there's some probably Facebook posts for our business that would not be a good use of my time. Um, gotcha networking with the wrong people there's no end to the kind of you know uh yeah opportunities that are out there to go hang out with people who are just sort of taking a lot um and there's no reciprocal sort of value there um so those would be some some low impact activities that come to mind yeah fair right and so the more that you're answering the right emails right and that you have a system where you don't have to burn your cognitive energy probably the more time you'll spend in your high impact activities right yeah. the less time you're spending with people who really are energy suckers versus energy generators in some ways a different way to say it right is oh i have more energy then for the people who really are like those people interested in relationships and building and, and reciprocity etc yeah. right so so the then that feeds into more time probably for the right kinds of people that you were talking about as a high impact activity Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I, obviously we're, I appreciate you being willing to, you know, sort of open up the, you know, your own experience so that you can make this real, but these are examples, right? Where everybody's going to have something where like, this is the most important stuff you do. Sometimes it's a task, but sometimes it's a category of tasks. So I find that managers, um, they need time in strategy, uh, time with their teams and then usually time analyzing whatever numbers or metrics or whatever, which informs strategy, right? Which then strategy drives down to spending time with their teams. And so if they keep that cycle going so much, like that's where the the value is, but they, they tend to, most managers tend to, or leaders, however you want to think about it, they tend to rob strategy in the name of just being busy with the team and not maybe spending as much time analyzing and finding the holes so they can create new strategies. And so the thing that they get paid for or, or to do is really to drive the business forward. And so people go, oh my gosh, I'm not driving the business forward as much as I could because I'm not 
you know, doing these categories. And so whether you're, let's say you're in the oil and gas industry or you're in healthcare or whatever, your specifics are going to be different in some of those categories, but they might bucket similarly to some other people. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And um, David, we've got 15 minutes left in the yep. webinar. So I just want to make one more appeal or encouragement, I guess, to the attendees yep. to submit their questions. If you've got any, we'd yep. love to answer them along the way. And I know there's some more material here for you guys to absorb, but um, yeah, feel free to ask questions in the, in the question panel and we'll get to them. Awesome. All right. So um, the, the two things can go together, you know, time and your high impact activities. You want to make sure that your calendar reflects your high impact stuff. You know, I mentioned that a little bit before. Um, now we, we're going into the land of distractions, right? Because the enemy of productive time is where you start going. Have you ever seen the movie Up? Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever watch it, right? So like in the movie, the dog is like squirrel, right? And right. so it, like its head jerks and then it forgets, you know, completely what it was doing. And, and we do the same thing um, as people. And then we come back to, oh, what was I doing? Right. And the classic example of that is you click on something in Facebook and then you end up just somewhere completely different. You're like, how did I, how did an hour and a half go by or whatever it is? Right. And um, so some of you are more disciplined than that. You only take half an hour or whatever, but still, right. Like it's that distraction level. And so how do you manage that? And I think about it a little bit like um, Hansel and Gretel. Uh, and, and uh, just out of curiosity, you're probably familiar right with, with Hansel mm -hmm. and Gretel. So, so give us the, what, what do Hansel and Gretel do? Yeah, they go exploring into a forest and um, they leave a trail of breadcrumbs so they can find their way out, which <laughs> total side note, but I always thought that was weird. Like wouldn't the birds just eat the breadcrumbs? Exactly. Like, right. Right. You, right. you don't want to do that in a forest, but anyway, that's probably oh, yeah. not <laughs> <laughs> no. but, but breadcrumbs is actually, uh, is actually the point. So yeah. leaving a trail to where you were and where you want to get back to. So a lot of times what happens is when we're, um, when we get distracted, we handle whatever the person, let's say it's somebody coming to our door and tapping or it's an email or it's a whatever. But we forget to jot down where was I and what was I thinking about? And um, there are huge gains to be made, particularly if whatever it is you're working on is a deep focus activity. Um, so here's what I recommend for people. It seems, might seem silly, but um, it's like dropping a pin in it, right? It's like bookmarking something. So it's great. Before I handle that, that thing, what am I doing right now, right? Even if it's you write down a word, right? So maybe you're in the middle of an email, right? And you're, you're like, oh, I'm finding, I'm, I'm trying to find a time with this person. So you jot down time, right? And then the next question is, what am I considering? I'm considering uh, uh, three people's schedules. So maybe it's Ann, Joe, and Bob, right? So great, Ann, Joe, and Bob. And then you write that down. And then where am I going with this? And then it's like, oh yeah, I want to make sure to mention, um, let's get together at the, the Ritz. I, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily show up at the Ritz a lot, but let's say, yeah, totally. I don't know. Uh, so write down Ritz, right? And so what you're doing is you're bookmarking. So what am I doing? What am I considering? And where am I going with this? Now you take that and you put it in, if you were a computer programmer, this would be even more substantial, right? You're pulling together all different kinds of, uh, let's say, inputs, right? You're coding, which is the line that you're on, but you're trying to plug it into all kinds of other things. There's, there's lots of different examples, right? For the complexity that we have. Um, and breadcrumbs kind of leads us to another level of efficiency. Um, have you ever made sandwiches before, like sandwiches in either volunteering or? Yeah, I have yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and I'm sure everybody who's done this, right? You know that the first sandwich is always the slowest sandwich, Right? Like there is nothing, nothing slower than the first one where you're like, oh, where's the bread? Okay, cool. And then you're like, where are the tomatoes or whatever kind of, you know, where's the mustard and the mayo? And, then, and you bring it together and then you slather it on. The second sandwich is faster than the first because you've already made the first one. You recognize the pattern of how you want to do it, right? The third sandwich is faster than that, right? And then the fourth and the fifth and the sixth, and seventh, right? And you start getting really fast at making these sandwiches. And the reason is your brain is wired to build cognitive efficiency over time. And so if you think about that, we can batch tasks within our day similarly, right? So it's a different kind of sandwich that we're building, right? So emails, right? If you're answering specific kinds of emails, like for you scheduling emails or let's get together or whatever, if you handle all of those, 
you're going to be a lot faster and you're going to have some of the language or, you know, the, the kinds of phraseology is going to be top of mind mm -hmm. for that task, you know, versus, you know, if you were, I'm just making up vacuuming the floor or you were building, you know, a campaign or whatever, your brain is in different modes right. at those different times, right? Mm -hmm. uh, calls, right? So making a lot of the same kind of call, um, or having conversations or analysis, uh, meetings, scheduling. You can kind of see like putting these things back to back creates cognitive efficiency and it prevents you from having sort of a Swiss cheese kind of day. We talked a little bit about this oh. last night. For me, a good yeah. example in my mind was managing teams when I was physically with groups that I would manage. Yeah. And if I, I would kind of make the rounds and talk to everybody at the same time because there tends to be a re repeating here's the budget, these are the goals, here's the objectives, here's how it ties in. Yep. And you sort of get all of that done in a, in a more efficient way as you go you around. Got you got it. Nail it. Uh, so multitasking is actually a myth. Um, it takes six times longer to complete a task if you're multitasking because there's this constant mental switching. Um, programmers call it context switching, where you have to gain context and then you can be productive. But then if you're switching constantly between things, you constantly have to regain context, uh, which actually burns the brain chemicals and depletes them um, through time. And your IQ actually drops 10 to 15 points. And you may have had this experience, Aaron, let's say that you're having a conversation with somebody and they suddenly start answering a text and then they become really quite dumb. You're like, Hey, uh, let's say it's a, a kid, you know, a, a child or, you know, I, even yeah. a, an adult. Right? right. And then they're kind of like, they're talking, they say a couple words and they're like, Oh, what, what, huh? Right. Yeah. And then there's this like, right. People's IQ goes way down when they're trying to hold a lot of different contexts at the same time. So right. uh, you get way more done by focusing on one thing at a time. So here's really what we've covered. Right. And, and sort of bringing these things together. Um, if you'd like to, feel free to take a, a snapshot of this, you know, take a screenshot, however you want to do that. Um, I know on my computer, it's command shift and four uh, or uh, taking, I think the larger capture is command shift uh, five. So if you want this stuff, you know, to kind of be uh, memory triggers, feel free. I would encourage you to take action on this quickly. Um, because that's how it will stick in your brain. Um, you'll actually get way more retention if you start implementing some of this stuff. So whether it's making your list, even if it's a couple items on your list, or thinking about your high impact activities, or looking at your calendar, et cetera. So um, let's, uh, let's see. Aaron, any questions that you had or, or the group has um, around, around this stuff? Nothing from the group so far. Uh, okay. You know, you're, you touched a little bit on the energy, and I'm wondering if we could go back to that with yep. some of the time because I feel, um, I feel like there is some efficiencies to be gained by getting a few things out of the way so that your brain and your energy is clear for the heavy stuff. I know you yep. talked about working on the, on the top priority stuff first. At times it feels like I, I would rather have kind of a clean slate before I start something Yep. Is there value in that? And when would you recommend the, yeah. that that approach so, is taken? So this is funny, right? Because um, this is both are true, but usually people default just to one side. So it's helpful to balance out with the other. And because of the availability heuristic, most people um, forget what the high priority items are, or it's sort of, it's burning energy in the background. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that said, I agree that there are times where once you have this list and you don't need to do the heavy lifting of looking underneath each, you know, rock and, you know, whatever, rock and log or whatever, you have them prioritized, you have how much time they are, and then you have also maybe the due date or whatever. It's easier for you to then say, hey, now what would be best? for me in this time period. So you don't have to go in a linear fashion, but I find most people are so overwhelmed. They say, Oh, well, I guess I only have the energy for this thing. Once you have them categorized though, it's almost you've downloaded them or dumped them out of your head. Then you have more cognitive resources to put into a project. So that's actually more appropriate to ask what would be best for me to do now, because you're not trying to keep track of a lot of things, which burns energy. Does that kind of make sense? So I think it's a cleaner read and, but I do think, yeah, let me get a couple things done, but most people spend a lot of their day 
just doing a couple things and they put off the big thing too long, yeah. that, that it tends not to be a, a worthwhile cause, uh, if that makes sense. So, so yes. And, and if, I'm, if I'm being completely candid with you, I write down all this stuff, I look at it, and then I literally do say, based on the time that I have, what do I feel, what would feel best to complete? Yeah. Because yeah. it's, you're regaining that energy that's tied up in that thing. Even if it's a low priority thing, sometimes it's like you're beating yourself up over it. Yeah. For, and so you want to re-harvest that energy, regather that energy out of that thing. So it's, it's be aware of all the multiple dimensions. And like you said, your energy that you have at any given moment is one of the dimensions. What do I have energy to do? And or what would feel best to gain more momentum for the next thing? And so. something that just occurred to me, the, the batching could also be a dimension in some ways. Tell me, maybe I'm mm-hmm. yep. big of a leap here, but like I, I'll separate like doing my books and the accounting for my business. And I, I don't want that to come anywhere near the creative stuff that I'm going to do because yeah. it just requires a different sort of mm-hmm. brain and energy and everything. So I'll, that's another dimension of prioritizing where yep. I, don't, I don't want these things to kind of cross contaminate each other yep. in some ways. And we, we've added that. That's a little 301. You're, you're, well advanced, I, wow. you know, but, uh, but a 301 is basically what kind of task is it? Is it analytical, yeah. right? Is it creative? Um, and there are other types of tasks. Is it strategic, right? And so you might group similar types of tasks together it, or another dimension is, is it big picture, right? Is it sort of translating vision into implementation planning, right? Or is it executing? It's another sort of dimension that you could go for. So I think you take the basic concept of add dimensionality mm-hmm. and run with it, mm-hmm. right? That, that's the thing. But if you don't run with anything because you're too overwhelmed to figure out, go back to some of these dimensions. These dimensions will help get the ball rolling. That's one of the takeaways I have. It just the, for instance, the low impact, high impact. Yep. Um, it's not necessarily you know, that, that sophisticated or complicated, but it's just the fact of doing it, sit down and, and, yeah. you know, think through it and actually create your list. And, um, yep. you know, that's a huge step into just getting into that space. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So, um, I just want to give a, a quick shout out. This is obviously sponsored by, um, the Daniels college of business, the executive education um, department. So, um, if you obviously found out about this webinar through them, and if there's anything that you're interested in that they offer, I can, you know, being an adjunct faculty, maybe I'm skewed in this, but being adjunct faculty, I just, I love everybody that I get to work with and teach with. Um, it's an exceptional group of people, um, that, that are behind the scenes as well as, um, sort of in front of the room, uh, doing those kinds of things. So, so you might see, Hey, if this was helpful and you want more things like this, um, find, find some of the stuff that they're doing, take a course, take a class, you know, or have it, have people come to your organization, um, because they, they do that as well. They develop custom programs. So um, hats off to the, the DU exec ed um, department and all they do. So Awesome. Yeah. Um, we did get a question uh, sure. from the group which said, will the slides be available after the webinar? And I actually don't know the answer to that, but let me check and we can, um, we can certainly send that out, uh, the answer to that through the email and the social channels that exec ed has. Um, you know, we're recording it. So my guess is we'll, we'll be posting it somewhere. So you'll at least have the, the webinar. Um, uh, but let me figure out the slides specifically how, what that, what that looks like. And we'll, we'll follow up with you all, uh, with an email. Perfect. Awesome. Um, so here's some of the, as we're wrapping up, I know we're, we're right at the end of time. Um, just remember your brain hates multitasking, you know? So the next time that you feel compelled to do it, say, is, uh, me dropping 10 to 15 IQ points more important? you know, than this, uh, or the lack of dropping those 15 points, uh, more important than the Facebook post that you're going to do or whatever. Um, I'd say, uh, to battle that, take the timer, flip it upside down, right. And keep yourself on task. Um, master your time in blocks. I think that's really important. Um, creating to-do list dimensionality. We talked a lot about that. Um, knowing what your high impact activities are, because once you know them, you can put more energy into them. Um, and then use breadcrumbs for distractions, really help yourself uh, get back to what you were doing at the most important moment um, and minimize the time you have to refresh. God, what was I doing? Cause that um, your brain hates that. So um, there's a, an email. If you're interested, feel free to email me or reach out. Uh, but it's been um, a pleasure to be here with, with all of you and Aaron, obviously a pleasure to be with you as well. 
Um, thanks for your, <laughs> thanks for <laughs> jumping in. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. It's like my own little coaching session that I get. Yeah, I, think, absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah. I take advantage of that for sure. Yeah. It's, Excellent. Excellent. It's always fun to do. We're going to do a digital marketing one coming up. So, um, for those oh, great. that are still tuned in, make sure you're, you're keeping an eye out for that. And David, I'm looking forward to the next one. This is always a lot of fun. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, Thank you for your time. Pleasure. Yep. All right. We'll see you the next time. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Take care. All right. All right thanks. Bye. Bye.